Hello today, this is Heavy Lead Enthusiast, and today I'm making some 3844. This is an old classic load. I've already made some reloads for it. And by the way, guys, I'm really happy to be back. I've had uh, some time off from work. But anyways, uh, wouldn't recommend this to the novice reloader. But uh, this load is uh, loaded up in 38 special cases. And I got, if this will focus... You can see that right there, it says 38 Special Plus P. I'm only using these loads for ammunition that can only be used in 357 Magnum guns. I would not shoot this in 38 Special revolvers. It's just simply way too powerful. I mean, just looking on forums, and there's actually people that have pressure Tested this load. I'm loading it with uh, 10.7 grains of 20, Alliant 2400, and it's pretty close to the 25 to 20,000 psi pressure mark. So just an FYI there. So don't load this and shoot it in your 38 special. I'm properly going to designate this load for just my GP100. Anyways, I'm really happy to be back, and I wanted to kind of post some of my findings. And what I found is that this load is very accurate at 10.7 grains. I did try 10.2 to start, and I was surprised with how much power I was actually getting out of that powder. Because if you read online, the great Elmer Keith loaded 13.5 grains. I don't know how he did that, because I would imagine it would blow up one of my guns just by just loading 10.7, I was just to the point where was, the cases were almost sticky, but they weren't. Primer signs looked good, everything else looked good, but there was a case or two. I think I shot two or three cylinders worth of it last time I was at the range. That one or two of the cases were just ever so slightly sticky. Not where I had to really hit that ejector rod hard. I really didn't have to at all, but it's kind of one of those things you have to be there to experience it. It's just the slightest, like think of the least amount of stickiness that is noticeable, but you notice it. That's probably the best way to explain it. But anyways, what I'm doing today is I have a new reloading setup. I'm living in a new place, but I wanted to basically finish up loading the rest of these shells up with uh, this Lyman 358-429 bullet and make some more of those 10.7 grain uh, reloads. I'm really enjoying them. I think they would be a good woods defense load probably. I'll In the future, I think I'm going to test these on some harder uh, mediums, see how they do, maybe against wood or water jugs or something. But uh, yeah, really excited. Just wanted to post this and let everyone know I'm back. It's exciting. It just seems like we don't get enough time to reload. So also another thing I want to mention, guys, is uh, before you prime it and start putting powder in, don't ever forget to flare your case mounts to accept the bullet. I've made that mistake a few times in reloading because you get excited and you want to just keep on plugging away, get it done, then go shoot it. But uh, as you can see here, so in this basket here, I uh, if I don't size it, or excuse me, if I don't flare the case mouth, it won't accept this bullet. It won't go in. If I simply run this up through this uh, flaring die... I check it, it will accept the bullet. And you want to flare it just enough so it will go in straight, as you can see right here. It's not super cockeyed because it's uh, flared just enough where it'll accept it. There's a fine line when it comes to flaring cases. You don't want to over flare it where you you would like bell this case mouth like a trumpet. You don't want to do that. 
but you'd also don't want to under flare it because what happens there is it won't go in straight. And even if your seating stem uh, pushes it in straight, it's going to shave some of that lead off, even if you powder coat it like these guys right here. So there's kind of a fine line. So take your time when you set your flaring die up, make small, minute adjustments. And then also another thing I wanted to add for reloading tips is to make sure when you're using your die that it's locked in here. So I'm using like a, I think it's a horn and D-lock ring. So if I want to, I can basically screw this on and then I set it with this like Allen key tool. And basically I can get this locked on the threads in the same position if I want to. And then I can simply screw it up or screw it out without losing my adjustment. See that, I don't know if you can tell, but this lock ring stay, stays in the same spot. So all I have to do is screw it back on. And, and if I wanna keep doing the same load, I can. Now, not every load's the same. So once you get it set, don't expect different bullets and different combinations to be the same. And also different brass will have slightly different lengths. So that's just an important note when it comes to reloading. But if you don't have a Hornady lock ring, let's say you're using a Lee, where you get a, every time you reload, you have to always set it. So you always gotta make that adjustment. That's fine if you wanna do that. Just make sure that once you get this lock ring set, make sure it's on tight. Cause if you don't get it set and it's not tight, this thing will more than likely probably start to come out a little bit slowly. So just an important reloading note. Also another thing I just uh, remembered is whenever you're flaring your case mounts to accept a bullet, as you're going through the gauntlet and you're doing all your uh, cartridges, you wanna make sure to check periodically. So don't just get it set up, check one and assume they're all good. So as you go through, what I like to do is check at least every other cartridge and make sure this bullet will go in there straight and it's flared properly. So not perfect, but it's pretty good. But as I go through, I always check these and make sure that uh, off chance this starts backing out, I uh, basically have this covered. When it comes to reloading, you always just want to recheck your work.